Hi guys, uh, my name is Jesse. Welcome to Mislaid Pages. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing any kind of video like this, uh, but it's definitely my first floss tube, so thank you for joining me. Um, I figured I'd start by giving you a little bit of background about myself, um, how I got into crafting and that kind of stuff. So um, I've basically been a crafter since I can remember. Uh, I kind of came by it honestly, I think, because my grandmother always made quilts and she made these um, really cute uh, stuffed bunnies. Uh, she did a lot of sewing, mostly by hand, um, so uh, definitely had that growing up. And my mom did all kinds of different things. Um, she, when I was really little, she actually used to make these shellac um, biscuits and um, bread stuffs um, and all that sort of stuff to put into decorative baskets. She was huge into Longer Burger, um, and so she did lots and lots of that when I was a kid. Um, but she also was basically the person who got me into making things with my hands. Um, when I was younger, she got really into um, learning about our heritage, uh, discovering our Native American ancestry, and um, consequently, we ended up going to a lot of powwows when I was younger. Uh, we both dressed in regalia for a long time, and so I actually learned how to sew buckskin, uh, how to cut it. So we did all that stuff. Um, so I've learned to work with a lot of different materials. And then that just sort of became this um, this thing that I like to do. I like to make things. Um, it's taken the last couple of years for me to finally sort of come into my own with that and realize that that's what I want to do um, as a thing. I want to make stuff. Um, and so I'm still trying to refine exactly what I want to make because my tastes are kind of all over the place. Um, and that's sort of where mislaid pages comes from. That's where um, my name comes from because my tastes and my interests and my hobbies are sort of all over the place, um, sort of like a manuscript that's just been blown to the wind. So pages all over the place. Um, and that's sort of kind of me. So um, I've been cross-stitching specifically, um, I think I started maybe 15 or 20 years ago. Um, I can't remember exactly how long. Um, and I actually, this is my very first finished piece. Um, this is the very first thing that I remember doing. Um, I may have made some smaller pieces before this, but this is the first thing I finished off. I still have this. Um, it's traveled with me from a couple of different houses. Um, so this is really awesome. And I don't know how old it is because I didn't actually know to sign it at the time. So there's no date on it. Um, I just know that it's... Um, it's probably at least 15 years old because I've been in my current house for about five years and um, this came from the previous house and I I may have moved in with it to the old house and I lived in that house for 10 years. So it's at least 15 years old, if not older than that. So that's my first piece, my first FFO, I guess is what you call it. Uh, and you might notice behind me, I have this little shrine to Pusheen. Pusheen is like one of my big things. Um, Pusheen is my spirit animal. Uh, I like to say I have a lot of spirit animals, so you'll hear about them, I'm sure, as we go on. Um, so that's my first finished piece. Um, and then the second piece I finished, because I was out of cross stitch for a really long time, and you may have noticed my shirt here, Do You Even Stitch? Uh, if you're familiar with Stiatch, you're familiar with this shirt. Uh, this is from last year's Stiatch, uh, Stiatch Along 6. And so my, my second ever finished piece, so this tells you a little bit about me, my second ever finished piece was Stiatch Along 6. So this is my finish from last year. Home is where the fur babies are. So um, Stiatch, if you're not familiar with it, the whole idea is that um, uh, Siach is a uh, husband and wife team, M and Matt Fitzpatrick, and M designs these awesome cross-stitch patterns, and she releases them a little bit at a time, week to week. For uh, last year, it was nine weeks. This year, it was 11 weeks. This, week, this year was huge, massive. We'll get more into that. Um, but this is last year's pattern, so what she actually gave us was these border pieces here, and uh, home is where the and then we, uh, they provided some, uh, some finishes for us, but then we could go off on our own and do whatever we wanted to. Um, I chose fur babies. These are three of my four fur babies. Um, so this is Loki, Luna, and Momo. Um, my oldest fur baby is not pictured here, mostly because I didn't have enough space, and also because these three get along, and my oldest does not. Um, Goldie is often sequestered because she doesn't get along with the babies. So these three are all basically the same age. Um, Luna and Momo are actually sisters. They're from the same litter. 
So they are super close, and Loki um, was at the shelter at the same time. He's maybe a week younger than they are, but he's the biggest of the three. So anyway, that's my second ever finish. So I was out of cross stitch for a really long time. I had a really difficult time crafting in general for a number of years. I, I only in the last year or two realized that I was dealing with a lot of depression, um, dealing with a lot of lack of motivation and that sort of thing. And um, in the last couple of years, partly because of getting into Stiach, this was definitely step number one, um, but partly because of getting into Stiach, I've started to deal with some things and get into a much better mental place. And now I actually have all this crazy motivation and I'm into so many things. And that's part of the reason I'm doing a floss tube now so you can also incidentally you can thank Stiach for this but you can also thank my friend uh, Rachel Ray of Rachel Ray Craft uh, for getting me into this uh, she's been doing videos for probably over a year now uh, mostly around diamond painting but she just did a floss tube and it really inspired me so now I'm trying to do a floss tube as well she really has been encouraging and so um, you know that's part of why I'm here today so that's a little bit about background, where I come from, how I got here. Um, so let's talk about some works in progress. So I mentioned Stiach. So Stiach along seven is this pattern. So this is what I've been working on for the last 10 weeks or so. I took a bit of a break um, because I went to Ireland with my husband. Um, so that was about 12 days. Um, didn't stitch a whole lot while I was gone. So I'm actually a little bit behind. You can see that there's holes here. Um, as you might have guessed, this is the Golden Girls. Um, we It took us a long time to realize it was the Golden Girls. Read uh, week one, somebody called it out. Uh, actually, somebody decided it was the Golden Girls based on the color palette. So talk about crazy. But it was supposed to be a mystery. Uh, it wasn't a mystery for very long. Um, but anyway, so we've got the Golden Girls here. I'll be stitching their faces soon. And we've got some finishes that was just released um, this past Saturday, yesterday, I guess. Um, as of time of recording this, I don't know when it'll be released or when I'll release the video. But regardless, it was yesterday for me recording this video. Um, so uh, I've got an idea for how I want to finish it. I'm going to keep it secret right now. Uh, but this needs to be finished by the 15th of November, so I need to get on this, uh, finishing this. It's been taking me a while. Uh, there's a lot of blends. There's a lot of cross stitches, or not cross stitches, quarter stitches. Um, there's a lot of switching colors and that sort of thing, so this has been taking me a little while. Uh, also, this needle minder, uh, I made that myself. You can probably tell that's like a sticker, but anyway, it's super cute. Rainbow unicorns, love it. So, um, also, courtesy of the Dollar Tree, this is a steering wheel cover. So, if you need a, uh, a ground guard and you want to go cheap, they got them at the dollar store. So, that's one of my biggest whips right now. Uh, you'll see me move in and out. I have all my stuff just kind of stacked right here. So, uh, this is uh, part of Stiach is that we are doing a collaborat uh, collaborative blah, 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 collaborative project. Um, and as the team captain for Sips and Stitches, I um, elected to do the main part of our design. Um, the other team members are contributing bits and pieces. Um, so this is the main section. So obviously that's Sips and Stitches. This is part of our logo. Um, it was going to be a lot more complicated, but I realized as I started getting it together that that was going to take me way too long and I just didn't have that kind of time. So um, our actual logo has much more background going on, um, but this is what we're going to have for our collaborative. Um, again, here's the pushing, pushing needle miner. I made this. I made this myself. Um, I actually, once I get my Etsy store open again, uh, there will be these in the store if you're interested. So just, uh, I have a few of them left. Um, but yeah, so that's Sips and Stitches. You can see I've still got some work to do on this. Um, obviously, this needs to all be filled in. I've been working on this today, but I really wanted to get this video done. So um, yeah, lots and lots of work left to do on this. This is due November 5th, so we are really under the wire on this, but it's just literally filling in these letters with blue, so that shouldn't take too awfully long. So that one's got to be done soon. Um, also, as part of the collaborative project, because making the main pattern wasn't enough for me, I needed to do another piece of the collaborative project. So this is my additional addition to the collaborative project. So part of what we decided to do was that we'd have our team logo, but each of us stitched a drink that we love to go along with it. So I love mojitos, one of my favorite drinks ever. So I have stitched this cute little mojito. 
it just needs to be finished off. We have to finish. We have to decide how we actually want to put these, the, the big piece along with our drinks. We have to decide how we're gonna put all that together. So that's gonna be fun. Again, let's do November fifth. So, um, and in addition, I've actually received one of my teammates' um, pieces as well. I know others are on their way to me, but this is, this is the one that I've received so far. So this was done by a team member named Carrie. She loves coffee, don't we all? Um, and this is super cute. I love her stitch and this floss. I have to ask her what floss she is because it's so soft. It's so, so soft. And look at the back, y'all. I don't know how many of y'all are into backs. I know some people are super crazy about that, but look how neat that is. And she's like, well, it's easy with single, you know, with so many or so few colors. And I was like, but it's still gorgeous. So yes, I love, I'm one of those people. I'm a little freaky about the backs. Um, see, here's my back. That's not so pretty, but it still looks kind of like, I don't know, impressionistic. So I kind of like it anyway. So that's our, those are our collaborative pieces. Rachel Ray, again, of Rachel Ray Crafts. Um, she is sending me a whiskey sour. Um, that she has done is super cute. Um, our friend Heike from Germany is sending, um, I forget what drink she did. I think she did champagne or something. Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, um, so I've got a few more drinks to get in the mail and then we'll figure out how to put them together and hopefully get all that done by November 5th. So um, let's see other stuff that I'm working on. This is, this is super cute. I found, I found about so many groups through Stiach this year. It's not even funny. So this is a stitch along. This is an October stitch along. Um, it's sort of a stitch a day kind of situation from nerd stitch along on Facebook. Um, I'm going to try to link these things in the video if I can remember to do it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but this is so this is literally like a new, oops, sorry. This is a new ring every day. Um, so you can see I'm, I think I'm on day 12 or 13, maybe day 14. I can't remember. But anyway, this is really nice. This is my first time working on even weave. This is a nice even weave fabric. This is from uh, Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics. So you're going to learn, you're going to hear a lot about Misty from me today when we get to the stash stuff. Um, but this was, uh, she did a sale where she had remnants and she had, um, you know, other sale items from her stash and that kind of stuff. So I got a package of remnants and this was actually in there. I think it's really cute. It's sort of a, it's almost a solid pale blue. Um, it's got a little bit of modeling you can kind of see, um, but it's really just a very nice soft fabric. And I've been working with these, um, I think this is 807 and, these are DMCs. It's 807 and 155, I think. So it's a purple and a blue. Um, it's really cool and really fun. I did this design. Um, I got, I wanted to do this SAL anyway, but um, I did this particular one on this fabric because I'd never worked with even weave. So I wanted to see on a small project how it would feel. It turns out I really love this. And when I remember to put on my reading glasses, it doesn't make me blind. So that's nice. So that's a fun one that I'm working on. Uh, it's kind of on the back burner because I got to finish all this Diage stuff. Um, this is one that's been on the back burner for a while, um, but I love it and I really need to get back to it. So this is a Macintosh Rose designed by Peppermint Purple. Uh, this was a free SAL offered by uh, Lakeside Needlecraft. Still available as far as I know. Um, it's a beautiful pattern. Um, what's going to end up happening is we have lots more black work in these areas and then the roses themselves will be different colors. So I believe that this half is a different color to here and then this rose matches that part and then this rose matches that part. I think that's how it goes. And then we have the leaf down here too. Um, I really love the Macintosh style. It's a, an art deco style if I remember correctly. It's really just one of my favorite artistic styles overall. The stained glass look, the, the sort of modernist interpretation of things. Um, so I loved this pattern. I can't wait to get back to this. But I started this right before uh, Stiach started because I was really amped up and really wanted to do some cross stitch and this was free and all that sort of stuff. So, um, so I got into it, but I had to set it aside while I work on Stiach. So these threads, we're going to talk about these threads more later. These are hand dyed threads. Um, that I got from a seller off Etsy. And we will talk about that more because I love this seller and I need to tell you more about her. So um, again, needle miner made by me. This is, I don't know if you can see it. It's a My Little Pony. How much do you love My Little Pony? 
Maybe you don't. I love My Little Pony. Um, I can't remember what this character is, um, but it's also it's done on a bottle cap, um, and I made this myself. I think I'm going to have these in my Etsy shop soon, too. I have to remember if I've done all the pictures yet. So anyway, so there's that. I'll be getting back to that soon, hopefully. And let's see. I have some much older pieces now. This one is not actually a whip anymore. This one is finished, but I have to, to FFO it. So this is super cute. How cute is this? Oh my gosh. So this is a Bothy Threads pattern. I bought this as a kit. Um, this is no cause for a llama. It's fabulous. Oh my gosh. So I have one of my best friends, best, best friends ever, told me last year that she's super into animals with glasses. Not sure why. She just suddenly got into it. She wasn't even sure why. Um, but she loves animals with glasses, and who doesn't love a llama? I mean, come on. So I found this pattern. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's perfect. So it was supposed to be done for her for her birthday, which was in August. Um, I actually think I finished it in time for her actual birthday, but didn't get it framed, and we haven't gotten together. So this will probably end up being part of her well, she'll receive it with her Christmas presents, probably. It's not part of her Christmas because it's still her birthday. But how cute is that? Oh, my gosh. It took me forever. I actually got really bored with the colors um, just because I'm not a neutral tone kind of person. Um, but, oh, it's so worth it. It is so worth it. I have a frame already picked out. It's sort of a beech wood color. I'm really excited to put this together. So I just have to, I have to take time away from other things to actually do this. So that one is a finish. Um, now let's talk about some older whips. So we've talked about Stiatch a lot. This I started shortly after Stiatch Along 6. This is actually the pattern for Stiatch Along 5. Um, I believe it's going to say, as for me and my house, we shall... I think the, the original pattern was, as for me and my house, we shall. And then the finish I'm going to use is Obey the Giant Head. If you're a Rick and Morty fan... You remember the giant heads? Yes, I do. I love the giant heads. So that's what this one is going to be someday. Um, just haven't gotten to that. And my oldest whip, this one is just about as old as my first finish. Um, again, it's got to be at least 15 years old, if not older. Um, this I got as a pattern for uh, another very close friend of mine who loves the stars and moon and celestial stuff. And I got this for her. It's supposed to be a pillow and it just really spoke to me about her. So I got it and I started it and, and we're still working on it. So, um, and this is only part of the pattern. I want to say it's going to be like this big when it's done, like that you know there's there's all kinds of pattern up here all kinds of pattern down here um let me see if i have the the sheet for you sorry guys i should have had the three next time next time okay so here is the picture so this is what the final design looks like it's really nice. I'm really excited to do it for her. Someday I will actually finish it. Um, but it's so big and it has very few colors. Um, and like I said, I'm, I have a hard time working on neutral tones. Um, I have a really hard time working when there's not a lot of colors. I'm, I'm one of those people. I need lots of bright colors to keep me interested. Um, you know, I don't know, ADHD or something maybe, but I need, I need bright colors. I need lots of new and different things, you know, ooh shiny, I gotta have ooh shiny or I can't, it can't keep my attention. So what I might do with this is going forward, maybe block out some time once a week and just, you know, work on it for an hour just so I can keep some progress up on it. Um, but yeah, that is my oldest, my oldest and maybe dearest whip, um, just because I love the person that I'm making this for. And someday I hope to actually finish it and give it to her. Um, and as a side note, I made this grime guard myself. That's my very first grime guard, and uh, they're not terribly difficult to make. Um, I found a great tutorial on face or not, on YouTube on how to do these. Um, I'm happy to link it if I can remember where I found it. Um, so not terribly difficult, but it is time consuming. So, you know, especially if you're like me and you tend to use the same size hoop anyway, um, getting one of those dollar store steering wheel covers is actually pretty cheap and easy. 
So there's that. And my last stitch that I'm going to show you, this is actually not mine. Um, so I found this. There is a, a place in Richmond. Uh, I live in Virginia, just south of Richmond. And there's a place in Richmond called Scrap RVA. They're a creative reuse um, agency. I forget what they call themselves. Store, basically, where people who have old craft stuff they don't want, they donate it to, to uh, Scrap RVA, and then people can come and buy it for cheap. And I was looking through fabrics and stuff, and I found this gorgeous thing. So this looks like it's stitched on linen um, because I can see the, I don't know if you can see, but it's got those sort of thicker and thinner threads, so it's not even weave. So that tells me it's probably linen if I know anything. Um, and it's got these beautiful colors in it. Um, it's so neatly stitched. Um, I would love to see if I could find the pattern because I would love to finish this. And we actually had a challenge uh, with Siach earlier um, in this cycle where we were asked to find a piece of stitching that was not ours, um, that was somebody else's, and make it into something new. Either finish it or turn it into something else, repurpose it. Um, and I was going to use this, but I wasn't brave enough because I really didn't want to mess it up. I love this piece. Somebody put a lot of time and effort into it. And so I didn't want to do something silly to it or something that might mess it up. So I ended up not using it. Thankfully, somebody else on my team had something else they could use. Actually, two different team members had stuff that they could use that they repurposed. So we had stuff for that challenge. But I still want to do something with this. I want to finish it off, maybe turn it into, you know, add a design or something like that. But it's kind of out of my wheelhouse right now, but I definitely want to do something really nice with this. And again, I have to show you the back because look how neat this is. Look how gorgeous, gorgeous and neat that is. Okay, I'm probably the only freak that really loves the backs, but they can be their own work of art in my opinion. Uh, in fact, one day what I might do is actually frame one or more of my pieces in those double-sided glass frames where you can see both sides um, so that you could actually flip it around and look at, at the back side because I'm a freak for backs. So yeah, that's a nice piece. I just, it's one of those things, it doesn't feel terribly old, but like I said, I can tell that somebody put a lot of love and effort into it and I had to buy it because I just couldn't believe that somebody gave it up that somebody put it in a bin somewhere uh, to be repurchased. Um, and I've decided at this point too, if I ever see unfinished stitches anywhere, if they're in thrift stores, Goodwill, uh, Scrap RVA, any place like that, I'm gonna buy them and I'm gonna do something with them because I just can't stand the idea of something so beautiful just laying around and languishing. So, personal mission. So that, that's the whips. Um, let me take a sip of coffee. Ooh. Okay. I apologize, but I really love Pusheen. I just got this mug recently. It is unicorn Pusheen, and it's purple. So it's the best of all possible worlds. And it has coffee in it, which you can never beat coffee. Okay, so let's talk about stash. I'm going to start with some non-cross-stitch stuff, actually. Um, because Stiach is so on my mind. It's like the biggest thing going on for me right now. So I have to start with my Stiach haul. So recently, and I don't think these are available anymore, recently um, there was a sale with merch. Uh, they do this once a year. What they do is they will have some kind of merch. This year it was stickers um, and some other stuff. I'll show you in a second. Um, they have some merch, but they also re-release previous year's patterns for purchase. The only way you can get old patterns for Stiach. So if you happen to find online one of the old patterns, or at least pictures of finishes of old patterns, and you're like, oh, I must have that. Well, wait till they do the next Stiach. They'll have an amnesty weekend. You can get those patterns again. So I pretty much have all the patterns because I bought them last year when they did amnesty weekend because how can you not have the patterns? So, but this year I got merch. So these stickers are super awesome. I have to figure out where to put them. I think I'm actually going to create... Um, a cross stitch cart. They have these awesome carts at Michael's. I already have two of them. I think I'm going to buy a couple more. I'm going to make one of them my cross stitch cart because I have a, I have a needle minder cart. I have a paint cart. You can kind of see the paint cart behind me. Um, but I think I'm going to have to have a cross stitch cart too. 
So, um, and they've made, they're making those carts in blue and lavender now too, like a bright blue and lavender. So probably gonna have to get two carts and I'll decide what I'm gonna do with the second one later. So stickers, this is one of the best parts, in my opinion, of the merch this year. Tote bag, do you even stitch? And then on the back, it's got Stitch. Established in Durham, North Carolina. Um, so yeah, this is awesome. And the extra awesome thing is that I think I'm going to hand dye this. I've gotten into ice dyeing lately. So I think I'm actually going to take the time and turn this into some other color. Um, make it tie dye, make it awesome because why not? Um, I'm only just now getting into this place in my life where I understand that if I purchase a thing, I can do whatever the hell I want to with it. I don't have to make it or keep it pristine like I received it. So not a fan of the canvas color. So guess what? I can dye it. I can do that. I'm an adult. I have rights. So anyway, so that's my Stiatch haul. They had shot glasses and um, something else too, but I I didn't get those things. I don't, I don't necessarily buy shot glasses a lot anymore. I have a lot of shot glasses. Someday I'll show you my collection. Um, I actually buy them at like whiskey tastings and things like that. So lately, actually what I've been getting is like... Um, old fashioned glasses or, um, basically like straight liquor glasses. Um, when we went to Tullamore in Ireland and went to the Tullamore Dew Distillery, we got some really awesome squarish, but twisted glasses, my favorite. Um, so I do still get glasses and stuff. And actually I went to the Stiatch drink along, um, to celebrate pattern 10, which was the back stitching pattern, the penultimate pattern. Um, and part of, the prizes, they did this, you know, can you guess the DMC? Turns out your bitch knew all the DMC numbers. Like how did, how did that happen? I don't even know. Um, I think it's because I also do diamond painting. So somehow the, uh, the numbers translate, you know, diamond paintings, a lot of times we'll use DMC numbers and then that's what actually burned the numbers into my brain. Regardless, I want a prize. So I have a nice tumbler, a glass tumbler from Stiatch as well. So I didn't need to buy the shot glass as it turns out because I got the tumbler as part of a prize so that was awesome so anyway um now let's talk cross stitching stash stash so uh I told you you're going to hear a lot about mystic fabrics um uh, misty johnson runs mystic fabrics she has an awesome facebook group where she does fabric wars um most weeks not every single week um but basically she dyes a bunch of stuff and then she puts it up for sale and you have to be the first one to say me please on any individual piece and then hopefully you are the first one and she sends you an invoice and you end up with lots and lots of fabric which is what has happened with me and I apologize for that that's my husband texting me he has the quagmire theme as his uh as his text message on my phone anyway so continuing misty fabrics misty mail so anyway I don't know why I did it that way <laughs> I found out about Mystic Fabrics right about the time that Stiatch started, and um, ever since I got into the group, I think I've bought at least one piece of fabric every single week, so I have a pretty good stash now. I'm a little embarrassed um, because, yeah. <laughs> so um, this is one of my, my newest acquisitions. This is Unicorn Poo. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can see the color. The lighting is not real great. It's actually this really pale mixture of pink and blue and purple. So let me, I wasn't going to pull, I'm not going to pull every single piece of fabric out because that could get annoying. But I'll try to pull this one out because this is so pale, it's hard to see. So unicorn poo. Can you see that a little bit better? Yeah, so. This particular piece is a uh, 32 count Lugana, uh, Laguna, Lugana, I always say it wrong. Um, yeah, so I got this because like I said, I wanted to start using even weave fabrics. Um, and it turns out that I really love even weave fabrics. I have no idea what project I'm going to do, but I saw this unicorn poo and I was like, I must have it. I must. Um, so I just got that recently. I also got this gorgeous piece of this is linen, I believe. I'll check the tag. Yep, 28 count linen. It's a gorgeous purple color. Nice and mottled. It's one of the things I love about Misty's fabrics is that she has this great 
um, modeling effect on pretty much every piece that she ever does. Um, she has a really great eye for color. She has a really great eye for design. I don't know how she does it with every single piece, but her pieces are gorgeous um, and super soft. If you like soft fabric to, to cross stitch on, you need to look at Missy's fabrics. Um, so yeah, that's a purple one. Oh my gosh, I forgot I had this. I pulled out my stash to start doing this video and I was so excited because I forgot that I got Galaxy Opal. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. This is 20 count Ada. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'm totally brave enough to use 20 count Ada. That's not a problem. I'm not sure again what, uh, what project I will use this on, but it's so gorgeous. I'm trying to get the shine out for you but it's purple and it's blue and it's dark and shiny. Oh, it's gorgeous. I was so happy when I remembered that I had that in my stash. Um, and let's see, I'll do that one in a Actually, I've got a couple, I've got a couple I'll talk about in a second. Um, let's see, this is a really pale 14 count Ada. So it's sort of a purpley gray color, um, almost pinky purple. It's hard to see, but it's really nice, nice pale color. Um, this piece, I also forgot I had gotten. This is like a um, Be More Pacific. So this was a Fabric of the Month color a couple of months ago. And I'm so glad that I found this in my stash because I'm getting ready to do um, a sal from not Frosted Pumpkin, no, from Stitchonomy. Getting ready to do a Stitchonomy Snowflake sampler, um, or SAL, and I think this is gonna be the fabric that I use. Um, what's called for is actually a little bit more of an aqua color, but I think this is a dark enough, a dark enough color that I think it'll work, and it's got the shimmery opal in it, so I think, yeah, that's definitely gonna be a nice wintery thing. Um, let's see, I got these from Fabric Wars while I was in Ireland, I think, or just after. I came back. I've got some 18 count Ada bright pink, I think fuchsia. Not really sure why I got this except that, ooh, bright shiny. It's actually not shiny, but it is bright. So pretty. Um, and then I got two pieces of this kind of greeny fabric. It's a blue green, not quite a teal, a little bit more green than teal. It's coming off really blue in the camera. Um, but I got two different pieces of this. I think these are both 18 count Ada. And that's the lovely thing about Misty too, is that she offers all the different counts. So she does linen, she does Madonna, she does Ada, and she does as many counts as I've ever seen one place have. So um, pretty much anything you're looking for, Misty probably has it. The only downside is she does have a very limited number of stock colors as far as things you can purchase on the website. Um, but it's really fun to be in the group and kind of do fabric wars and see what she's decided to work on this week. And you can kind of get in that way. And I also just recently got in on her Fabric of the Month Club and I'm super excited. And hopefully it will enable me to spend a little bit less money on Misty Fabric since I will be getting a guaranteed piece every month. I won't maybe pay so much attention to Fabric Wars and I'll stop buying fabrics because I already have way more fabric than, than I have projects and I have a lot of projects. Um, okay, so now we have gotten to three pieces that I'm trying to decide between. So I have a piece of 18 count Ada and I have two pieces of 32 count Lugana. And these I have purchased for the express use of, or for the express purpose of using for the Stitch Your Own Adventure SAL. If you have not heard about this, if you're a Harry Potter fan and you have not heard about this, let me tell you. So the Stitch Your Own Adventure is, uh, it's also called Letters from Hogwarts. I think it's hashtag Letters from Hogwarts. That's the official hashtag for the SAL. Uh, it's made, uh, it's been designed by a gentleman named Stuart Cunningham. He's Scottish. Oh my gosh, the yeah, accent. Um, Stuart Cunningham of Cunning Cross Stitch. He has his own blog spot page and he has designed this massive year long SAL. Um, the actual finished size of the stitch is going to be 250 stitches by 250 stitches. So on 18 count Ada, I think that's about 14 inches square. Um, on 16, it's going to end up being about 16 inches, maybe 15 and a half inches square. It's massive. Misty did a special run of fabric, um, special colors just for this stitch along. She worked with Stuart um, to come up with some colors 
and I originally bought the Ada because I was going to do Ada. Um, and then I realized that there are potentials for quarter and three quarter stitches. And I was like, you know, I think I really might want to have even weave instead, make it a little bit easier on myself. So um, this is the Soya fabric, the Soya as we lovingly call it. Um, this is the Lugana and it's really nice. It's got sort of a parchment-y color. Um, this one is a little pinker than the Ada, I think. It's got a little bit more brown tone, pink tones. So I've got this to choose from, but I also have this Snert uh, color that I picked out because I couldn't decide and I didn't know whether Misty would have the Soya fabric long enough. So I also purchased this Snert in use the excuse the noise um in the 32 count lagana actually this is the pinky one the other one's not as pink it's a little bit more green at least compared to this one so this is a massive yeah this has got the pinkies in it so this is snert but it's also got these darker tones that that the other doesn't have but you know as a as a slither claw um, I don't identify with the pink. I mean, that's more of a Gryffindor kind of color, I think. Um, so, I mean, this one has more variations in color, but it's got, it's got so much pink and, and Slither Claws don't need pink. That's a, that's a Gryffindor color. So I don't know. I don't know that I'll use this. Certainly I will find a use for it. Um, if you have suggestions for giant SALs with a parchment-y sort of color that's got undertones of pink, um, if you think that there's a project that's so perfect, bleh. if you think that there's a project this would be perfect for, please let me know. I would love to hear about it because um, I don't have enough projects already on the books. But anyway, who doesn't need another cross-stitch project, right? You, you always be stitching always be stitching okay so I'm trying to choose between those two fabrics I do really I actually really love pardon the noise I do really love the color on this Ada this is actually um, super perfect for what my house is and for the stitch along and everything look how nice that is it's got a nice parchment-y kind of color but it's also got some green undertones yeah, you know, just that, that little hint of Slytherin, you know, I don't want to be full on Slytherin. I keep getting sorted into Slytherin, but you know, I'm really a Ravenclaw. So, um, I choose to be a Ravenclaw. I identify as a Ravenclaw. So, you know, just that little hint of Slytherin. But anyway, so that's why I keep waffling It's because I really want to use the even weave, but this piece of Ada is actually like the perfect color. So what do y'all think? Do we go with color or do we go with count slash fabric type? What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Um, yep. So that is my stash of Misty fabrics. It's a lot. Uh, and I have just acquired those in the last 11 weeks. So think about that. <laughs> I, I may have a problem. <laughs> So, um, and interestingly enough, because I have acquired so many fabrics and obviously I'm, I'm already starting to forget what I have on hand, pardon, I'm going to make, make a noise. Um, and because I've, you know, I've already started to forget what I have on hand, I need a way to store and organize these. So if you're the kind of person that has a stash, um, actually what I should do is has a stash. <laughs> you know, if you have a, an uncontrollable stash or, or something that used to be uncontrollable, and you figured out how to tame it, please let me know. Uh, give me some ideas. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm a very visual person, so having some way to store it where I can still see what I have uh, would be ideal. So, uh, but those are my Misty fabrics. I do have a couple more fabrics I want to show you in my stash. This video is turning out to be way longer than I thought. I really didn't think I would talk for an hour. Uh, it looks like I might because it's already been 40 minutes. So um, this is a cute little fabric I got. This is... A uh, Hardanger, Hardinger, Hardanger fabric um, from Crafty. What is this? Crafty Bit Dye Works. Um, so this is a 22 count Zweigart Hardanger Ada. 
Um, I got it for a free hardanger pattern from uh, Lakeside Needlecraft. So super cute. Um, the only thing I will say is it took a long time to receive this. I don't know if they don't dye it until you order it, um, but it, it took a little bit longer to get this than I thought it would, but it's still a really gorgeous green color. Um, and this is actually from, I believe this is from 123 Stitch. Um, someday I'm going to do a Hayed, um, a Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, this piece is called Long Have I Waited. It is a gorgeous purple and blue dragon sitting on a rock. It's majestic. It's fantastic. Uh, once I actually start working on it, you will certainly see it here. Um, but this is Stormy Clouds. It's a 25 count Lugana that I'm going to use for that. I probably don't actually need a patterned fabric for that because it's a full coverage um, pattern. But I figure if you see any of the fabric at all, this will be a nice, a really pretty background to see. Um, I might actually chicken out and get the pre-counted, the pre-gridded fabric instead, just because it is full coverage, you're not going to see it anyway. But this is, this is very nice fabric. So that's my entire fabric stash, because I'm not going to show you any basic old, like, plain white oatmeal Ada, anything like that. So pretty, pretty fabrics. Um, let's talk about threads. So, <laughs> so I mentioned earlier, um, I have a particular favorite on Etsy for threads. Uh, the threads that I got, uh, the floss that I got for that Macintosh rose came from this person, Mary Lee Rockley of, not hold on, of Yarn Player on Etsy. Um, hopefully it's showing backwards to me. I'm really hoping when I watch this back, it won't be backwards. So Mary Lee, you can see in this picture, she does her own tatted jewelry using her hand dyed flosses, her over dyed flosses. Um, so she does some really beautiful work. Um, it's not something that, that's particularly my bag, but it's beautiful. Um, but her floss, oh my gosh, the floss. So the flosses that I'm using for that SAL, this is one of them. So this is that rainbowy color. Can you see that? How gorgeous is this? Trying not to cover up the colors. Nope, too far. Okay. So, I mean, we have the whole rainbow there, and it's gorgeous. This is called Painted Parrot. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorites. The other color, the sort of purple-green variegated, is this one. And the camera is not picking it up as nicely as I would like. This is really gorgeous and vibrant. It looks a little bit washed out on the camera. And this color is called Lilac Sea. Uh, definitely one of my favorites. And I recently picked up a couple more colors from her. Um, I keep a watch on her Etsy because I love, 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 love the color combinations. And the thread is so nice to work with. So this color is called Green and Gold. Uh, simple enough. And it is green and gold. Beautiful. Um, and then this I'm actually probably going to use um, as the contrasting flower color in my Macintosh Rose SAL. It's red and gold and green. I think that's going to be gorgeous. Nice warm colors to go against those cool colors. Um, and this is called, this is Sugar Maple. Really beautiful. And then these I got just because this color is gorgeous and it's getting ready to be winter and I feel like I will find something to use this on. This is called Summit. Look at these colors. Blues and grays. Some really intense blues. It's not coming off as nicely on camera. But we've got some light blues, some intense blues, almost whites into grays. It's really nice. Very wintry color. Um, I think it's going to be perfect for some some winter stitches coming up. I might even work that in on the snowflake SAL. We'll see. Um, definitely those are about the colors that are being used in that SAL. Um, I don't think I'll do every snowflake with that, but I might use that a couple times. Um, and then I also, uh, one of the elusive colors that we needed for the Stitch Around Adventure is this 4010 variegated color. 
I don't know if you can see that. So it's, it's different shades of blue. It's very similar to the summit that I just showed you. But this is called for in the Stitch Your Own Adventure, Letters from Hogwarts. Um, could not find it anywhere. Finally found it on everythingcrossstitch.com. So if you're doing the Soya and you need this color, it's on everything cross-stitch. Promise I didn't buy them out. I did buy several, um, but I did not buy them out. So, and in searching for that, I was like, well, if I'm going to pay shipping on some floss anyway, I might as well buy some really pretty floss. So um, I had discovered through one of my Facebook pages, um, I can't remember which, I think it's the Snarky and Nerdy cross-stitch. Um, there is a cover page image of what looks like rainbow stitching and it's it's kind of rude. It says, you know, don't be a C or something like that. Um, don't particularly care for that word. So I'm not ashamed to cuss. I don't really want to say the C word. So um, anyway, the color in that pattern was gorgeous. And they actually showed the Threadworks floss. Um, so I went and bought some. So this is Threadworks over dyed floss. I believe this is um, somebody's balloons is what this color is called. And it's not quite straight up rainbow, but it's got all the colors. And it's really gorgeous. And it works up really, really nice. I will try to link to the um, to the Facebook page so that you can see that. Gorgeous. And while I was there, I got a couple more. I can't remember the names of all these colors. And they're not actually on these cards, which is kind of sad. They've just got color numbers. Um, but I got these, sort of purple and gray and blue, a little bit of magenta, really nice. And I got, I buy things in twos, just so you know, or more. <laughs> I'm always afraid of not being able to get it again, so I tend to buy things in multiples. Uh, this is almost Mardi Gras. Uh, we got some purple and green, blue, teal, really nice. And this is a little bit more muted. I always think of this as like a watercolor kind of color. It's purple and gray and blue. Have you noticed a theme? Uh, there's there's a lot of purple. I, I generally always get purple, but because I love purple. Um, and yeah, this one this one is no different. I think this one is called Indian Harvest. It's Indian something, which I found interesting. So again, purple, uh, light blue, oranges, uh, which are not usually in my color palettes. Sort of orangey brown, brownish orange. It's really nice. So, yep. So that is my thread stash. So, um, I have I've only just really gotten into stuff that's not DMC. Um, so I've only just started to discover hand dyed threads and over dyed threads and things like that. I'm actually really itching to get some from. Uh, an Etsy seller called Hand Dye Boba Londa, recommended to me and and the internet as uh, excuse me as or by <clears throat> pardon me by Rolodex stitches. I don't know if any of you watch Rolodex, but she is fantastic, and it's how I learned about a lot of the different SALs that I'm going to get into in the future, including Tiny Modernist um, as well as Long Dog. Stitches, long dog samplers, I can't remember. I was just watching and I can't remember. Regardless, a lot of the stuff that I found out about recently, I found out through her. Um, and uh, Hand Dyed by Rolanda is one of the things that, one of the sellers that she really enjoys. So um, I have favorited them on Etsy. I haven't bought anything yet because I've been spending way too much on Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics. <laughs> Which I think I may have, I think I found Misty uh, through a combination of Rolodex Stitches and Stiach and Cunning Cross Stitch. I think it was sort of the culmination of the sources where I found um, Mystic Fabrics. So... Uh, well, that's a, just about all I have for you. I could go into a couple of things, but we're already at 48 minutes, so I think I'm really going to close this here. I'm not sure how often I'm going to do these videos. I'm thinking maybe once a month, maybe every two weeks. Um, we'll kind of see how it goes. I think a lot will depend on how much stitching and how often I'm stitching, uh, because I don't want to just show you the same things over and over again. I want to show you new stuff. But I do have um, a bunch of projects that I want to get started after Stiach is done. Um, I was going to talk about those, but I think I'll save that for the next video. So I think in a couple of weeks, once I get 
um, Stiach under my belt, get that finished off so I can show you, then I'll be able to talk about stuff that's coming up, um, other stitch alongs that I want to do, um, stitch alongs that I have already purchased and am waiting to receive, uh, including one that's super cute from Lakeside um, Needlepoint. Uh, actually, I think I have two from Lakeside Needlepoint that I'm getting ready to start in the next couple of months. Um, I'll also show you when I finally get started on the Soya, the um, Letters from Hogwarts to Your Own Adventure. Uh, I have the bits for it. I have not started it yet. So, um, and I also in the future want to talk to you about the hand dyeing that I've been doing um, and get your opinion and see what you think. So for now, that'll be it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time.